Okay, guys, so what we're going to do is we're just going to wrap this up now. Um, this uh, little look at um, animations. Um, so what we've got so far is we've got these three guys over here. And when I go into a certain radius, the animation to start running will play. And, you know, when I'm away from them, they will go back to that idle animation. So now what I just want to do is set up so that I can shoot these guys and um, essentially they'll then play like a death animation um, you know when I've killed them so that's the last thing we need to do I'm going to go through this fairly quickly um, because there's a lot of stuff that we've kind of already covered uh, with a few new things um, and you know if you need to slow the video down or read it go over it again then you can but um, I'm just going to kind of whiz through it a little bit so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to come over to Mixamo again and um, I'm using the same character model here, and I've got this animation standing death backward, which I thought would work quite well for, you know, we've killed him off and he's gonna die. So um, I'm gonna hit download. Um, do make sure that you change this to without skin. Remember that, because we don't need to download the actual 3D model anymore, just the animation, and then hit download. Okay. Once that's done, we can get rid of that. Um, come into my folder uh, where my enemy stuff is and add import to game. And there's my animation. Open that up and it will remember the same skeleton that it's been using. Hit import all. Okay, and there's my standing death animation that I've imported. So this time we're not going to be using our blend space or our animation blueprint like before. We're just going to be adding it in to the actual, this here, the actual event graph. Um, I can actually see that I've got it already. <laughs> That's where I was working it out. So I'm gonna delete that and we'll start afresh. So yeah, where we had all this, just the normal event graph for our um, enemy. So yeah, the thing is, and this is also here, which I'm gonna delete start fresh okay so what we want to do is we want to make sure that the actual enemy has some um, health so that it's not just dying immediately you know when you shoot it once you might want that to happen but in most cases you generally wouldn't have that so we're going to give it some health so it can take a few hits and then it will play the animation once the health gets to zero so um, if you haven't done so already you need to add on a box collision so what I've added, so you add a component and then box collision um, and then you can resize this. So this is the area that you're going to be able to shoot at and technically hit the enemy. So you can see my box collision is fairly generous to the player. You know, they could miss by a fair bit and they would still technically hit him. So, you know, you might want to resize that depending on what you want. But for demonstration purposes, I'm going to use this. Um, so I'm going to go over to my event graph, make sure my collision box is selected and add a collision event which is add on component to hit. I need to tell it what I actually want to be able to hit it so I'm going to cast to the first person projectile, there it is, go back to other actor. Um, so that's the only thing that's actually going to be able to hit the enemy to, you know, hurt it. And then, you know, what's going to happen? Well, this is where we want to say it's going to take away some of its health. So we need to tell it what its health is, and we're going to be using a variable for that. So I'm going to come over to variables over here, add a variable, and as you kind of saw earlier on, I'm going to call it Z health um, for zombie health. So when you first add a variable, it's always a Boolean by default. So that's like a yes, no. Uh, we don't need that for this situation. We want like a, a percentage or it's like a value. So we're going to use float. Okay. Um, once you compile that, you know, after you've added the variable, you can change the default value of it. Now, you might think, you know, 100% would be what you want, but we actually want one when you're using a float because one is technically 100%. Okay, all right, so yeah, what we want to happen now is we want to drag in this variable we've created and it's going to set that health to, 
type in float, minus float, drag this in and get the health. Okay, and I'm going to change that to 0.2. So what that's going to do is going to set the health to minus 2 of whatever the current Z health is. Okay, so it's not always going to, you know, jump back up to 1 again. It's always going to be min minus 2 of whatever it is. So if it's 0 0.8, it'll take away minus, you know, it will minus off 0.2 and take it down to 0.6, etc. All right, hopefully that makes sense. Um, so then, you know, then it's got to get to 0 to say that, that he's dead. So I'm going to come off of here and I'm going to add a branch. A branch is uh, your like if statement. So that a condition. So the condition is float is less than or equal to. So which float is going to be this set health? Okay, so it's plugged into both those. So when that Z health is less than or equal to zero, what's going to happen? It's going to We'll just put destroy actor here for now. It's going to destroy it. So let's compile. So when the first person projectile hits the um, enemy, the collision box, it's going to set health to minus 0 0.2 of the current value. And then when that current value gets to 0, destroy the actor. OK, let's just play. Run up to this guy. Shoot him a bunch of times. And then boom, he's dead. Okay, so we know that works, but obviously it's not playing the animation. So this is where we need to input that animation. So before it actually gets destroyed, I want to play an animation. Um, there's a couple of options. We want the skeletal mesh one because we're using a skeletal mesh. Okay, there we go. It's going to play the animation. And we just need to plug in what animation we want it to play. Um, did I import it? I don't think I did. <laughs> Let's just go back. No, I didn't. So, no, I did. Standing death backward 01. I did import that. <clears throat> so let's find that. Standing death animation 1. There we go. So that's the animation it's going to play. Um, but we don't want it to destroy immediately because it's going to destroy the actor before this has even had a chance to play. So what you need to add in here is what's called a delay, which will just stop it from destroying whilst that animation plays. Um, and I think this animation is about three seconds. OK, so that's like that can take some testing, but I think three seconds is fine. So I'm going to compile that and test again. So shoot this guy, animation plays, but Notice how he's still moving towards me. Um, I don't want that to happen. So um, let's move these up again. After the animation plays, I want to stop essentially this AI movement from happening anymore so that it doesn't keep moving towards me. Um, uh, so if I come off here and it's disable movement there we are of the character movement which remember is this so that's going to just disable any of that from happening anymore whilst that animation plays and then destroys okay um, compile let's try again so here we go he comes running towards us shoot him a bunch of times he's dead falls to the ground and he's gone okay Let's kill off these guys. There we go. Excellent. That works perfectly. So let's just recap on what we did. So we added a uh, collision box here. And on a hit of that collision box with the projectile, it sets the health, which we um, set to 1 by default, uh, to minus 2 of its current value. We added a condition so that when that health gets to less than or equal to zero, then when that's true, it's going to play that animation, which is the death animation. 
disable any movement so it doesn't keep moving towards us. Delay for three seconds whilst the animation plays and then destroys itself. Okay, that's left false because if it's not zero, it's just going to keep repeating. You know, it's just going to carry on as it was normally. All right, so yeah, that, that's it really. So I guess from here, um, what you can also do, one just little kind of tip whilst you're developing is um, in here. I'm going to get it to print string. Okay, and what that does is it just displays a message on the screen um, in the what you know in the in development rather than when you've exported the game. So what I can do is that string I can get it to be to tell me whatever this health is at one current time. Um, so I know there's a lot of things connected to Z health, but You'll see what that does in a second. If I compile that, if I shoot this guy, if you'd look at the top left of my game screen, it'd be 0 0.8, 0 0.6, 0 0.4, 2, 0, dead. Um, so it gives you that kind of indicator that that variable is actually changing and doing something. Um, we didn't necessarily need to use it in this instance, but it's just a good sort of a thing to use to to see kind of behind the scenes that things are working um, especially when you don't have it set up as like a, a widget and things like that so yeah again hopefully that's kind of useful um, so now uh, um, with the game your own games uh, in this instance here you could um, you know positioning the enemies is going to be down to your own game design you could change you know the the, the vision of the enemies and how far they can see so they don't all kind of chase you at one time. Um, all sorts of things that you can do, but what you've learned from doing this um, with the animation blueprints, the blend spaces, adding in animations via the event graph should allow you to be able to, you know, customize and do animations for what you need them for, um, make use of Mixamo. Um, and yeah, hopefully it all goes well. So that's really all for now. Hopefully yours has worked out. If it hasn't, just play through the video again, slow it down, make sure you do it step by step, um, and it should all be fine. That's all for now.